why God has chosen the weak, the insecure, the small, the tiny, insignificant, down deadly. Uh, why God chooses what he, who he chooses. And I think there's something here that um, will help us today as we, as, we, um, as we look at it. Why God has chosen, uh, that's the one I didn't make white. We tried out all the rest of white. Why God has chosen the least, the little, the lost, the lowly, the weak, and the poor. Last week at the annual meeting, as Al shared about the cookies in New York, and the, and the New Church in Mexico, I started to wonder. And so here's just some pictures. This is the old church, that building that they got. And um, it really isn't much, you know. They went inside and cleaned up. And, uh, and I just started to wonder, you know, we, of our missions and what we're doing there. Uh, they were getting that ready for church. Uh, it's quite a challenge. And there they are in church. Kids are in there and they're um, having church. And, uh, but they needed more. So back in November, this is a crew. I don't know who that guy is there. Do you know that guy? Mm. Who's that hiding in the back? I think this is a crew of giants. Uh, but they all went down. There's many of them. And some of the uh, pastors and, and, and some of the ones from uh, the church that are helping. And they went down to help in this. And so there we see the, the tearing down of the old church and the building up of the new church. It's been quite a task, and we saw some of the pictures. This is once it was up in November, and uh, sitting inside, they just the, the framed in, and uh, my goodness, you got a coach in there. <laughs> Pastor's daughter, yeah, okay. And we'll see if it, here's, at Christmas, they got ready, and uh, there's still lots of work to do, but they were so thrilled with the church, and they got ready at Christmas. Uh, there's uh, the operation people, damn, truck, bus, oh, look at I, think, I love this one because I think Miriam stopped because she was looking at the guy in the roof. That's her in there looking up at the... That's Al's truck, but you're in it, driving it. Yeah, looking at the guy in the roof. I think you want to make sure they're make sure safe. Uh, there's Al working in the, in the building, uh, putting the water. And there's where they meet for lunch. This is lunch. And uh, there's Danny from the German church, and uh, they're down there. And there's, I think this is cookie time. Was that cookie time? So yeah, they have Coke and cookie. And um, so for if you're getting cookies ready, the kids in uh, from the our um, midweek program that made a bunch of cookies on Friday. You want to get cookies ready, you need them for, for Wednesday, right? For sure. Because they're leaving Thursday morning to take the cookies down there. And you just never know what, what cookies can do. There's Miriam and Al. Uh, He's looking at the boards and the fancy stuff they're going to be doing. And um, there's a pastor's wife. And she went down to the altar to pray. We wrote the prayers. All of this is on video and it's also on, uh, on YouTube if you want to watch it. But I started to think about this. Here we are. There's Pastor Anselmo and, 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 and Anna and Al and Miriam. And, and just sitting there um, as it was getting, the work is getting done. And uh, they are so blessed, and uh, and I just thought, like, wow, you know, like what they can do. And here's our headquarters, where where this when you go down there, that's where you stay in these rooms. There's our, our junior high, and uh, that's a picture of the junior high with the gymnasium and the vehicles that are all there. And uh, there's the crew with our hero there. <laughs> uh, these are the ones that helped get the building done. And uh, now they're going down to finish it. Here's at our school at, at the school. This is the carpentry of the classrooms, automotive, uh, Lima Trade Training Center. They also have driver's education down there, and that's all because the people from here, Alamir specifically, have given their lives the last almost 30 years of their lives to provide these things, and others have come alongside to walk with them and provide for them. And so here's our our high school, and there's a gymnasium there at the other end of the high school. And you can see they just have, have uh, sand down there. So what they do is they get crushed um, pecan shells. They get these truckloads of crushed pecan shells and they put them down, it keeps the dust down, and that's where the kids play in crushed pecan shells for the fields. No grass. Uh, the plants are only growing because all the wastewater is, is poured on the plants to keep the trees to keep them growing. There's our elementary. Now it's all been closed in so that's um, and that was 
um, that's just a few blocks away from where the, where the uh, other school is. And uh, there's Al, and there's uh, John. John drives down there, he's in a wheelchair, he's handicapped in a wheelchair, but he drives down there and uh, he works the whole time he's down there. And I just thought, well, talk about God taking whoever he will to go down there. There's the Operation Eagle School on church campus, uh, and it is just uh, amazing all the things that, uh, that uh, God is doing in that church. And that's because people from a little place that most people would never know where it exists, from this little area, have gone in their hearts to go down and do this. Now, what I started to think about is, uh, and I'll just cut you some pictures here, is that um, when Al shared how that they waited two years for someone to come across the border to draw plans, but they're afraid to go across the border. When I was down there, and the Ruizes actually live about a, about a kilometer from this church, um, they, they, uh, they, when they did the extreme home makeover, the pastor in this church had them, um, thousand, two or three thousand people came in to be interviewed, because it's all secret. Uh, and if, for you, those who don't know how extreme home makeover works, is they are surprised when the people when, the, when they show up because there's four or five families in El Paso that are waiting. They all know there's a, a, a producer in each house. They all know that one of them's going to get a call, or uh, four of them are going to get calls that they won't be building for them, and then the bus is going to show up to the, the fifth one. And so when they come out, they don't know if it's going to be them, but they have it all done in secret ahead of time. And so this is the church I went by there, and, and Jesus Jr. goes to the school there. Um, there are some mega churches in, 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 in Texas, which all there is is the Rio Grande the border, and uh, this church has about 20,000 members. Um, so there they are, and, um, and, and I'm just going, like, you know, I'm thinking, I was thinking about when you were talking the other night, Al, that here we are, a little bunch of people from a little tiny place, these people live right there, and you can be sure, in a church of 20,000 members, they have lots of money. That's just from the air. You can see it from the satellite. That's the church and the parking lot. I mean, it's unbelievable what they have there. And um, here's the inside of the church. You know, and uh, when you take that back and look at that little place they're meeting in, in Juarez, and what we can do, we might not be able to provide this, but I'm just saying, Something's wrong with this picture. 15,000 plus attend every week. Something is wrong with this picture. Here's another church of 70s of God, uh, um, and, and it's Bethel, and, and this is their, their drawing, and these, their buildings there, and their other building there. Um, this is just in El Paso as well. These are mega churches. Yet, uh, here's another one, Christ Cathedral. Uh, everywhere you go, this is the big one we talked about. And then there's Al. <laughs> and there's... Um, and I just feel like it really started to touch my heart. I'm thinking, what is, there's something wrong with this picture. Not that we can't go, we shouldn't go. But what's happening with the hundreds of thousands in El Paso that could be just going across the border to help? Uh, we, and, but Al, he just drives up 2,000 miles and, and away they go. In 1 Corinthians 1 26, it says, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you are wise in this world's eyes, or powerful, or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose the things of the world considered foolish in order to shame those things that those who think they are wise. And He chose the things of, uh, that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. I started to wonder why does God use little? God chose things despised by the world, things accounted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus for your benefit. God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God, and he made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scripture says, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. This is what it says in this church. Welcome to abundant living or a church that loves God and loves people, a place where you can experience God and connect with others. Don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. We would love for you to join us for one of our weekly services. The Abundant Living Faith Center is a non-denominational, multicultural church in El Paso, Texas, with about 20,000 members in 2009. So there they are. When we have churches like this, why should we have to drive 2,000 miles? 
to help the people across the border. Why are the Ruezes one kilometer from this church and they're walking across the border? Are there not people that can help? Well, there are, but maybe there's something that people need to listen to. Here's another thing, there's just something, there's Creflo Dollar, a um, great um, African American preacher, and he decided that he needed a new jet. So he's asked everybody, uh, 20,000 people, to give $300 each so he could buy a $65 million jet so he could take the gospel around the world. And uh, we're like, um, he got so much flack, he's backed off right now. <laughs> Because we were going, like, this is crazy. People are dying and they're hungry. They have nothing. And, 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 and he needs a faster jet to do the work of the God, gospel. Let's read the Beatitudes. You see, God takes and has a different economy. And it's not, these people love God. They're wonderful people. Um, and the Ruiz go over and their son goes to that school and that church. And uh, they're friends with them. Um, but, you know, God has a different economy, and I want us to see that because so often I've heard, you know, like, like I've had, you know, over the years, the issue that we've always run into here is that if what we're doing is right, why aren't we big? Why isn't this growing big? And, and, and that is the issue. It's not the issue that, did he bring anybody, or did we reach out to anybody, or what is big all about? Well, this is the Lord said, the poor in spirit. Embracing our need for God. Blessed are the mourners, experiencing God's comfort in our pain. Blessed are the meek, choosing humble submissiveness over ambition and authority. Blessed are the hungry for righteousness, longing for God to make things, all things new. Blessed are the merciful, extending God's incredible compassion and mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, making our hearts fully God's in all we think, say, and do. Blessed are the peacemakers, bringing healing, togetherness, and fullness in our, to our world. Blessed are the persecuted, following Jesus no matter the cost. Wow. He said, blessed. Well, he doesn't just say blessed. Let's read it out of the Amplified. We're going to go through this, each one. In the Amplified, it amplifies so that you understand what they're saying. And so the Amplified in Matthew 5, it says, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed, happy, to be envied, and spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward conditions, are the poor in spirit, the humble, who rate themselves insignificant. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I would say we probably rate ourselves insignificant when you look beside a mega church in El Paso. We're sort of kind of insignificant. But God is dead, we're not insignificant. He said, blessed, happy, to be happy. We're to be envied. You know, people look at it and go, oh, I wish I, I wish I would, you know. We're to be envied, he said. That's first, the first one. Blessed and in very enviable, happy. With happiness produced by the experience of God's favor, and especially conditioned by the revelation of his matchless grace, are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You don't think of mourning that way, do we? But he says, I'm like, wow, I did a funeral yesterday, and, in the home, and you know, the hope that we have in God. I mean, this world, yes, they, they were married for 60 years, and, and uh, but you know, what's coming better? I love the story of the, the, um, of the and I've told so, so many times about the lady that said when she got buried, she wanted to have her fork in her, in her, in her casket with her. And they said, why would you want a fork? She said, well, whenever we have a potluck, when the ladies are picking up the dishes, they always say, keep your fork. The best is yet to come, the pie. And she said, so I keep her fork, because the best is yet to come. So it's to be happy, mourn, because they will be comforted. Wow. That doesn't fit in our society, does it? We don't want to mourn. We don't want to talk. That was actually funny, because every family is different. In this family, they love, love to humor. And, um, and um, he told the story of how they met back in, in 55. And she, and she had met him at the, the, uh, going downtown, and she came over her, with her friend over to his mom's house, and there he was sitting there. This um, a lawyer was sitting there on a chair with his feet up on another chair, and she tripped and fell. And anyway, she got up, and then she had a cup of coffee, and she walked over and looked at him, and he wasn't moving his feet off the only other chair. And he said, you know, that old hardwood chair isn't very soft. You might feel better sitting on my knee. And she did. 
<coughs> that was the beginning of the relationship. And uh, they got married. They've been married for 60 years. So, so uh, I told a little bit of the story. Then the granddaughter told the rest of the story. And Dad probably wasn't hearing so well because before we had lunch, he told the story again <laughs> of how they got together. You see, uh, you know, like, like um, when, when we realize the hope that we have, he's very lonely now, and, but we have the hope is in God. We, we get to spend eternity with our loved ones again. Blessed, happy, blissful, joyous, spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward condition, are the meek, the mild, patient, long-suffering, for they shall inherit the earth. Wow. The meek. Someone has thought meekness was weakness. It's not weakness. Meekness is strength under control. It's knowing that you can clean somebody's clock, but you don't have to, because it's in God's hands. And what, did, what happens to those who, who live in meekness? Not go out and scrap and fight, and fight for their rights. What happens to the meek? They inherit the earth. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot better than just winning an argument. <laughs> we have to inherit the earth. Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous in the state in which they are born again. Child of God enjoys his favorite salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, and standing, right standing with God, for they shall be completely satisfied. Oh, this is not self-righteousness. There are people that seek for self-righteousness to prove to everybody else how righteous they are. And if you don't believe how righteous they are, they'll, they'll have it over you to let you know how righteous they are. <laughs> that, but he's saying, no, if we hunger for his righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with God, um, we'll be satisfied. Wow, well, isn't that what people want? They want to be satisfied? Plus, and happy to be envied and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward condition, are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Wow. When we are merciful, we will obtain mercy. A lot of people need to learn about mercy, for being merciful. Because, you know, the very things that we're hard on people for, what does it say? They come back, the chickens come back to roost. Hey, you're into the same. So, uh, you know, uh, what goes around comes around. Why do they say things like that? Because it's true. And so it says, if they're merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Do you want mercy? Do you want forgiveness? So we must forgive, and then we'll be forgiven. If we don't forgive, then it says we're not forgiven. Blessed, happy, enviable, fortunate, and spiritually prosperous, possessing the happiness produced by the experience of God's favor, and especially conditioned by the revelation of His grace, regardless of their outward conditions, are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Oh, only God knows the purity of our hearts. Uh, we know. And when we get challenged and we, we come out not showing the purity of our hearts, uh, we want to get even, we want to, you know, it's when we surrender to God, we walk in that period, Lord, whatever it is, whether we like it, or he's sleeping in the boat, we're going, Lord, when you wake up, we're about to sink. He says, it's okay, it's okay. And he said, no, what would happen to your faith? Did you know that the Son of God is in the boat with you? And you know that we are pure in heart, they'll see God. Blessed, enjoying, enviable, happiness, spiritual prosperity, and the life, joy, and satisfaction of God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward condition, are the makers and maintainers of peace. For they shall be called the sons of God. As we seek to make peace, as we seek to get to resolve things, not carry people's offenses, not try and get things going, not um, try and like, get, get even, but as we seek to make peace, that means sometimes we we lose, we, but we win by losing. When we let things go, when we bless people, when we like to blast them, there's a difference of blessing and blasting. When we bless people, when we like to blast them, you know, we're, we are maintainers and makers of peace. And it's a daily call, the sons of God. Blessed and happy and enviable, fortunate and spiritually prosperous, in the state in which the born again child of God enjoys and finds satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, Regardless of his outward condition, are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed and happy are those who are persecuted. I think you got that wrong, don't you? Who wants to be persecuted? I me. Mean, you know, but it says, for those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for being and doing right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Wow. If you are able to 
endure the persecution for doing right. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Wow! I thought, well, you know, the guy says, um, get what you can and can what you get. Hoard it. Hold on to it. No, oh, give it away. Give it away for a gift. And uh, you'll be forgiven. Blessed and you'll be blessed. Read it through the Proverbs and the Psalms. The, the, generous, the generous person will be blessed. And they'll have so even those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Not because we're, we're, we're a nutcase. Because there are nutcases too. I listened to one speaker last night. He was saying that uh, he took a fellow outside the bar. And there was, he said, we need to talk about the Lord. He went up there and there was a preacher. Preaching. And here's his pastor. And he's... And he said, wow, not only, not only did I got to say, but God, you put a preacher there. And then he thought, oh, no, the guy's an angry preacher. And he looked at the pastor and said, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. I thought, oh, no, oh, no. You know, I thought he was sharing God's love. But he, and he's not a preacher because he's been in the bar. He's going to hell. The guy, there are people like that that just, they don't get it. You know, so he'd be persecuted, but not for racist sake. For being obnoxious, for being overbearing, but you know when we when you do kind and you pay good for evil and, and you bless those who curse you and you still might get persecuted, but but uh, theirs, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, happy to be envied and spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of your outward conditions. Are you when people revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things? Gets you falsely on my account. He's saying you don't have to. You don't have to go out and try and right the wrongs. You don't have to go out and try and tackle the world. You don't have to go out and prove that you can blow people up like they, they can blow you up. He said uh, you're blessed. You're happy. Envied. You think who wants to be persecuted? You mean they're going to envy the fact that we're persecuted? We're like I don't think so. But it's true <clears throat> because you know God is with us in that all. Be glad and supremely joyful, for your reward in heaven is great, strong, and intense. For in the same way people persecute the prophets who were before you. So what's he saying there? He said, blessed and happy. Trust in God, when, even though we go through things. And when people are be not nice, then we, we need to be nice back. There's enough opportunities to not be nice, but we need to, be, we need to repay good for evil. You are the salt of the earth, he said, and if the salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality, how can the saltiness be restored? It is not good for anything any longer but to be thrown out and trodden under the foot of man. So the saltiness, you can lead a horse to water, but can't make, can't make him drink. Someone said, give him salt, he'll drink. And you know something? If we are the salt of the earth, if there's actually some value, people see the difference, um, they will get thirsty. They will hunger and thirst and, and, and respond. And that's why he said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a peck of measure, but on a lampstand and gives light to all in the house. And so we see, let your light so shine before men that they may see your moral excellence and your praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds and recognize and honor and praise. And glorify your Father who is in heaven. How? Well, as people see it. So when you, um, when, when Al and Miriam and the crew show up to build, down there, they, they, they figure a little bit of heaven has come from Canada. Um, when, they, when you see what they've had, and when you see the crew coming, and you might not all be getting along or whatever, and it might, it's a long, long journey, and, but when the people see that, they will bless and glorify, and that's what um, Pastor Anna is saying, and, in their prayer, you see it on YouTube, uh, about how people have come from another country to bless them. And they're giving honor and glory to God. She wrote about it again. Honor and glory to God. Um, yeah, we appreciate everyone that's done it. If you're part of the cookies, and you're part of the, of the giving, and you're part of the praying, and you're part of the going, it's all part of it. But the real honor and glory goes to God. Otherwise, it would be done by people in El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> They're right there. They just can do it. They have the money. But hey, it's God that's going to get the honor and the glory. Do you not think that I've come to, to do away with the, or under the law of the prophets? I've come not only to do, I have come not to do away with it, with or undo it, but to complete and fulfill it. And so we see the Beatitudes. Poor in spirit, 
embracing our need for God. The mourners, experiencing God's comfort in our pain. The meek, choosing humble submissiveness over ambition and authority. The hungry, hungry for righteousness, longing for God to make all things new. Merciful, extending God's incredible compassion and mercy. Pure in heart, making our hearts full, full of God's, in all that we can say and do. Peacemakers, bringing healing together and fulfill uh, fullness of, of, to our world. The persecuted following Jesus no matter the cost. Why the small, the weak, the weary, the wayward, the worn, that God would give the glory. That's what it's all about. You know, if we're going to be fearless, as um, Daniel, Daniel uh, Strickland was sharing at our conference, if we're going to be fearless, it means we have to be honest. If we're honest, we have to be vulnerable. If we're vulnerable, we have to allow people to see our weaknesses. If we see our weaknesses, then they'll see our failures. And guess what? When we come to that place, because they had our seminar was on being fearless. Well, she said this is how the way to fearlessness. To be honest, vulnerable, weak. And when we fail, God shows up. God shows up and he is more than enough. I'm going to close with just um, a um, quick story. And then I'm going to show you just a little clip. Uh, in this story, during the war, uh, I believe it was in Vietnam, uh, one of the commanders, they were going into this village and they hadn't swept the village properly and one of the young men, 19 years old, beside him, was shot and killed by a sniper. And he was so upset. Under his command, this young man was shot and killed. He got on the radio and he called in for an attack on that village. That would mean they would bring in bombers and they would blow up all kinds of people in that village and get that sniper. And when he looked over, he saw one of his young sergeants with a look on his face. He thought, I can't do that. So he called off the aerial attack. And they went in as they, they normally did and swept the community. And all there was was women and children because the sniper had long since gone. And he could have blown up that whole place to get even with one person that lost his life. I think how many people's lives would be lost. You know, when we come to the Lord, it's all about caring, sharing, blessing. And <coughs> when, when we really have a heart for our community, it's a huge thing. Um, some people struggle with it, don't understand it. Whether it's small, but Merrick played the video. He's Lord of the city. He, there's more he wants to do in the city. There's more he wants to do in our lives. More, more he wants to do in Juarez. There's more he wants to do in um, in Bethlehem and in the central Alberta. And so last night on um, on um, Wayne Cadero's show uh, on the uh, New Hope, see if I get one that works here. Um, they just shared a, a fellow from the States to share this. We have to be willing to get involved in their lives, to care deeply, to bear some burdens, and to listen and get involved in their lives. In fact, there's a great lady from this church that does this. Her name is Caroline. I just want to highlight Caroline. In fact, we have a picture of Caroline. And, and she has an amazing ministry. She'll actually buy cases of Bibles and go to the Institute for Human Services. She'll introduce herself to people who are hurting and just let them tell their story. Often in, in a very low point in their lives, she just gets involved and let, let them talk for a long period of time, offers them a Bible, and then says, hey, would you like to come to church with me? There's food there, and it's a lot of fun. This is a person from your church who gets sick, who bears some burdens, who, who's willing to do anything possible to reach people. And yes, go ahead and give God praise and her great honor because this is a this is someone who really cares imagine what would happen if all of us in our own sphere of influence would be willing to bear some burdens 
Here's what's so interesting about this story to me. If you think about this, you've got four guys carrying their friend to Jesus. And, and try to picture this with me, if you will. Jesus is inside a house, and he's teaching the word, and it's so crowded. Everybody's gathered in that these four guys are coming up, and they can't get in the door. Hey, we got a guy who needs Jesus. But everybody else is in there listening to Jesus. He's teaching, and they're like, well, Mm, that's good. Write that down. Did you get that? Oh, woo! That's good. And they're doing their little Christian thing. And this really can be, without even meaning to, what we start to look like to people who are without Christ. We're in the church, doing our little church thing, and we go, oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm, I love that new song. Woo! That song is so good. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. That song is so good. Oh, yeah. Do you see the new Bible study? And there's that new Christian movie coming up. I hope this one's going to be good. And the whole time, we're doing our own little Christian thing when there are people who need to get to Jesus, but we've got our backs turned. And without even meaning it, unintentionally we're communicating, we don't really care about you. We've got our own things going. You can go to, mm -hmm, as far as I'm concerned, because we got our little Christian gig going. We don't mean to be like that, but we can literally have our backs turned to those who are in the greatest need. As a church, I believe God is calling all of us to bear some burdens. In fact, you all, Pastor Wayne was telling me story after story after story of the way you are involved. Can you imagine if every single one of us saw it as a divine calling to be a light into this world? When someone is hurting, up, oh, there's an opportunity for me to show the love of Jesus. When someone's alone, up oh, there's an opportunity, a divine appointment. God created me for this. Some of you, you're driving down the road, someone has a flat tire, you've always fantasized that you could be an ND 500 tire changer. Oh, glory, that one's for me. And you pull over and you recognize, this is an opportunity for me to help someone who is in need. Because they don't care how much you know, they want to know how much do you care. Four guys cared enough to drag their friend all the way to Jesus, and all the people who were on the inside of the backs turned to the ones who was in need. We're not going to be like that. We're going to have our face forward showing the love of Jesus, because those who have a greater influence will bear some... I'm going to try it again. Those who have a greater influence will bear some burdens. The second thing that we're going to do as followers of Jesus to have a greater influence is we're going to... Those will bear burdens. And um, so I, I, was, I was, when Al shared the other night, I was, um, I thought, why? With all those people, millions of people, we drive by millions of people that could be helping. But they're enjoying church and, like he said, they're doing their own thing and God bless them. God love them and bless them. But he's given us an opportunity to go. Alan Merriman, give their lives to this. And so many others to go and to bless. And see, the story he was telling was the how they, the, the man had to rip up the roof to get their friend down in front of Jesus. Because everybody was having church. They were so busy, they blocked the place out, and no one could get in that had a deep. And then Jesus, and you know what kind of people were in there because when Jesus said, um, the Lord are down, he said, your sins be forgiven you. And then the people that were there listening were furious. Who does he think he is? He can forgive sins? Does he think he's God? Uh -huh. And then he said, to show them, rise up, take your bed and walk. I'm telling you, when he got up and walked, the crowd parted. <laughs> they let him out, they wouldn't let him in. And I just thought, well, you know, we need to pray. Not to be upset with these other churches. I show you the many churches. They're all over. Wonderful. I listen to their service. You go online and listen to them. Great music and a great time. But there's hurting people across the border. Hurting people across the border. And we pray for those people across the border. I guess because it's small here, we have a heart for the people that are going through those things. We can't relate to the 20,000 people in a church service. You know, but we can relate to those who are hurting. And we can pray and we can bless them. And when I show this, um, 
what touches my heart, I just shared with Scott, this, with Pastor Scott this morning, is that, is that Pastor Wayne has now started 145 churches all over the world. And when you see what they're sharing, this fellow has started a, a Bible app that has three or five million people using this Bible reading app. Pastor Wayne's church, what I just saw, that would be on five times. It was on twice last night. I, I copied that. It would be on five times last night, two and three today. He'll be sharing that. And not only does he share it, but there's 3,500 people watching online as well. It's going around the world. And I share that to say this. Why does God pick little places? Well, when Pastor Wayne was just developing his ministry, there was a young man that said, I'd sure like to come over to encourage you and help you. And Pastor Wayne in Hawaii said, I can't afford to have you come over. He said, I'll pay my own way and I'll share. And while he was there, the principle he shared was the importance of going into the prayer room and praying, but the <coughs> equal importance to go out of the prayer room and touch people. It's exactly what he was just sharing. This is a pastor from a huge church in the States. It was just, that wasn't Pastor Wayne, that was a pastor from a huge church in the States. Anyways, um, they got it. They got it. And that church, those churches are reaching out. Uh, many of them will gather at 5 o'clock this morning, which is about now over there. And they'll be setting up tents and kitchens because they have many churches. I've been to four of the churches in Hawaii, in Honolulu, home. Um, they're, they're in there. They call them the Levites. They set up the tents. They don't own buildings. They set up tents. They use facilities. They haul in a complete kitchen on a trailer. They pull everything out and they cook for the people there. So right now, people in, in Honolulu, in, Ma, in Diamond Head, right, you know, if you've been to Diamond Head, right across the street from where you go up the mountain, there's a big uh, um, building there. It's, a, it's a, a theater. They use that. They set up tents outside. They have children's ministries all over. Man, it's hard enough just to get here in time. They're setting up tents. At 6 in the morning, they're setting up kitchens because they've learned it's all about serving. So that young man went over there and he challenged him. Not just him, but he was one of them that challenged him. And that young man came from this church here in Bentley, Jack White's. And it's going on and on and on. He's gone with the Lord. But he impacted, grew up here in Bentley, and impacted 4,000 churches around the world. Why does God take something small? I don't know. <laughs> but it's okay. Don't ever feel, if you're not big, if you're not a mega or whatever, don't ever feel there isn't a role. Some of the tiniest, tiniest little elements of our body are the most needed. Are the most needed. Body doesn't function, it just functions properly without some of those little tiny elements. And just realize that as Al and Marion go and others go with them, and as we pray, wow, it's a continuation. I, I'm very sad that I never did get to meet Jack Wentz and myself, because he left here many, many years ago and went on. And to see what God is doing, they get it. We don't just have church, we go from the church out and touch people. We reach out to our community, we bless them. We come, and this week there isn't a council meeting that just told me, but we, we can sit in in council and smile at the people and bless them and pray for them. Not to say anything, we're not there to change anything, we're just there to bless them. You can go to the school meetings, you can go to whatever and bless people. Bless them. You know, and um, not for what we can get. So I had a phone call this morning, somebody that's going to church somewhere else, they have for years, they want to know if I know anybody can come and pull their driveway so they can get out. So I told them who they could probably get a hold of. Um, you know, just, um, but you know, I go like, stay in your own driveway if you're not coming to my church. <laughs> well, we can feel that way, right? You know, but uh, Scotty Garris has got a little plower, so I said, you know, you can call worms trucking. Uh, and, um, you know, like, uh, some people are plowing. But you know, the, in, in ourselves, we think, wow, why? So we bless those people, we drive by them and bless them. And if they don't want to go in, that's fine. But we thank God for people from why well, in that one article I call us crazy Canucks. Because they are so afraid to go across the board and go, we go and Al and Aaron go over and over and over. God's blessing. It's the most dangerous city in the world. But that's what they say. 
But wow, look at what God's doing in the lives of people. So weak, small, insecure, inferior, you know, meek, mild, whatever. That's okay because then God is the one that gets the glory and the honor. And so that's an answer to what Al was sharing the other night. It just was really troubling me. I'm thinking, there's something wrong with this picture. You know, even with, with Jesus and Maria, I like to write to our phones on those churches and say, hey, I got friends in El Paso that need a vehicle. How about you taking just a, a, a speck of your offering of 20,000 people and get them a vehicle? But then guess who would get the glory? Me, because I bug somebody to give. And it probably wouldn't be a good car anyways. We're praying that God will provide a vehicle for them. Right? God will provide for all of the needs of building this building, this church. They weren't planning on building another church. They were planning on fixing, keeping our other facilities up. But God put it on their elements' hearts to do this. And now we stand with them and pray. God bless. Let's just pray now. Father, we just thank you that it doesn't matter. Uh, we can get up tight with fighting with the waves. But Jesus, you're asleep in the boat. But you're there. And you're in the small. And you're in the small communities. And you're in... Uh, where people's hearts are touched. And you said you would send help from your sanctuary. The sanctuary is the heart of people. It's not a big cathedral, it's the heart of people. And so, Father, we just speak a release today for, uh, for each of those churches, Lord, for the school, for the students. Lord, the funds that are needed, we speak a release. Lord, you've already got them out there. A vehicle for Jesus and Maria. All the funds that are needed to finish up this church. Lord, for the school to wrap up this year with um, continuing getting the bills paid, even when there's a difficulty with the American Canadian dollar exchange, how much more it costs. Lord, you're not worried, you're sleeping. Well, God, don't you realize the exchange rate? And so I thought I was just having a rest because I think you're going to be okay. Because I did I not say in my word, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. And I own the hills on the, well, we had that, but he does. And so, Father, we thank you that all these provisions. And so as Al and Mary go by, Lord, we bless uh, the, the big churches. We bless the, the work that they're doing. We thank you, Father, for, for the impact that they're having in El Paso and, and uh, all these wonderful uh, ministries. But, Lord, thank you that, that it doesn't negate what you call us to do. And so we stand with Operation Eagle Building Society. For Al and Mary and Lord, as they go, may they go with the in the power and the glory of the Lord, and, and for those that are on the board, for Ron, Lord, and just the ones on the board, that we pray that, God, you're going to show opportunities and ways that funds will come in as people realize the work that's being done. We thank you, Lord, that when people watch that video or YouTube or whatever, that, Lord, they're not just going to watch it and say, oh, that's neat, but they're going to go, wow, I can be part of that. Lord, we just thank you that we can speak a release for vehicles, for buildings, for funds, whatever's needed, and especially, Lord, for protection as they travel and as they go down there to ministry this week. We thank you, Lord, that, that you're not worried about small, because when Gideon got his army together, he came out with 32,000, and Lord, you sent 31,700 home, and 300 went out against a huge army. But Lord, you brought the victory. So we thank you for the victory that's ours, the hope that's ours today. We give you praise now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Was it worth coming today? I hope so. God bless you. I think there's coffee and goodies. And if you want to keep making cookies, ooh, you might get a cookie store when he gets back. <laughs>